Today I want to talk about how I became MGTOW. And I subtitled this topic, How Tom Like Has Changed My Life. Because I really get this man credit, G. Like, this man really changed my life for the better. Now, for those of y'all who have no idea who Tom Likas is, uh, he's a popular talk show radio host. I'll provide a link to his website in the description. But I had no idea this man has been on the radio for years and years, because <laughs> I've never heard of him myself until summer of 2013. And let me also say that I do acknowledge the fact that Tom Likas himself has never proclaimed to be MGTOW. He's just out here doing his own thing like the rest of us. But I've listened to shows where he has been notified that he's highly regarded within the Manosphere and the MGTOW community. So how did he change my life? For this topic, I got to reflect back to the past. Uh, and I've been shamed more than a few times for doing this, which is also part of the reason I do it. Um, not only to convey my message, but to call out the blatant double standard that if a woman goes through shitty relationships or dramatic experiences... You know, she can cry to the world and write books and movies and be on talk shows and be celebrated by society for her strength and fortitude throughout her troubling times. But on the flip side of that same coin, if a man attempts to do the same thing, he's viewed as whining like a little bitch and he needs to man up and get over it. And getting over it basically means you never can talk about it ever, ever again. Fuck that. So let's go back a few years. I'm sure many of you are familiar with my, my little episode of Cheaters that went viral in my last relationship. That was August of 2012. Now today, people would naturally connect the dots and say, ah, that's why he is the way that he is. Well, not entirely. You see, even after that happened, as big as that was at the time, even that wasn't enough for me to just leave that relationship alone. Not only did I make a public apology, which didn't get nearly as many views as the first video did, but I still wanted to make that relationship work. So we got back together, even after all of that. See, I was one of those diehard blue pill kind of guys. Like, I was sold on the idea that if you really love somebody and it was meant to be, you just stick together through any and everything, the good and the bad, and all that romantic ass bullshit. Needless to say, that shit ain't work. <laughs> that shit did not work. <laughs> but yeah, we tried. But anyway, eventually it got to the point where she started back fucking around on me on more than one occasion with more than one guy. And I finally started fucking around on her, <laughs> which made me just as fucking ratchet, honestly. <laughs> like, best thing would have been for us to leave each other alone. But I was holding on to her just trying to get back to where we once were, you know what I'm saying? And she was holding on to me. Basically in the capacity that I've always been to her, which was a beta male utility. Now I'm not going to sit here and point the finger like I'm the only victim or like I didn't stay in this situation of my own free will in the court. I was where I wanted to be, or at least I thought so. And just like everybody else, like besides all the drama, we had quite a few good times that I always remember and always cherish. But we just continued to be this happy, dysfunctional family until the relationship became too toxic to uh, continue. So, moving on, um, I always joke with my married friends about this. The couch. The motherfucking couch. Ladies, if you're listening, this is why you don't ever want to put your man on the couch. Or sleep on separate sides of the beds, because it's been nights like that too. But, it would be nights. Sometimes we wasn't talking. Sometimes whatever nice gesture I would do, she had a fucking attitude about and just was very unappreciative. Sometimes, instead of just opening up to each other, we would be in different rooms under the same roof. And somehow that was supposed to be like a chamber of reflection for me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it was supposed to be me on time out. And I know sometimes women tend to do that shit excessively, which is also called withdrawal of affection, which could also be considered as a form of psychological abuse. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can be abused for the baby way for you to get. <laughs> so, as you can imagine, I got very acquainted with the couch and the opposite side of the bed. I consider those to be the same things. This is where I spent many a night on the internet, on Google, on YouTube, looking up all type of relationship advice and what do women want and horoscopes and motivational speeches, all that good shit. And then I came across Tom Likas. Thank you! <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> For tuning in to the Tom Likens radio show. <laughs> what if he said, he'd be like, this is not. <laughs> What's about right when you wacko or convicted violence? No! <laughs> 
That shit, man, I love that show. And listen, I don't even know how the fuck I came across the Tom Likas show, G. I know it was on YouTube, but I can't remember what the first video was that I saw or what I listened to. But at the one show, G, I was hooked. And, like, I just wanted to listen to every show from that moment for it. Excuse me, it's getting hot. This liquor must be kicking in. But anyway, everything he talked about, really, from building wealth to traveling and the hypocrisy and religion, uh, dealing with women, and even dealing with yourself, like accomplishing your own goals. Everything he was talking about, G, was resonating with me. I'm just sitting in this bitch like, yes, like, yes, yes, this is the secret. This is, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is every fucking thing. This is every fucking thing that I've been thinking to myself, but just would never say, you know what I'm saying? And without me even realizing it, I started developing a different perspective about the relationship I was in. I started developing a different perspective about myself. I wasn't out here kissing everybody ass, waiting on them to respect me no more. I wasn't out here holding on to a relationship that's bound to fail anyway, you know what I'm saying? Well, I was almost to that point. Um, <laughs> I just finished watching this old movie called American Beauty. Uh, shout out to Louis Marco who suggested it. But if you ever saw that movie or if you watch it, I was pretty much the husband that was in that movie. It's like you're just there in this relationship that's going nowhere fast, but you're just still there. I don't know. <laughs> you're just there. Like, why the fuck am I even here? But you just don't go. You're just still here. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, it was the week of uh, Mother's Day, 2013. I'll never forget. We got in this big-ass fight. We arguing back and forth and shit. So I'm walking behind her, following her into the bedroom, and she slams the fucking door in my face, G. Like, it was this. I know y'all can't see me. It was, like, right to the tip of my nose. The door slammed in my face. I could feel the wind from that motherfucker. Doosh. And I just blacked out like the fuck. I kicked the door in, G. I broke the door. I took the phone and I threw it against the wall, G. I've been left marks on the wall. All type of property damage. Stupid, stupid shit, G. I could have been locked up for this. And security came. I was escorted out of the building. All of my shit is in her apartment. And I was barred or banned from that housing complex. Like I wasn't allowed on those premises anymore. Until I went through an anger management class and I had to pay for that property damage. I had to pay for that phone. I had to pay for that wall. I had to pay for that door. Which ain't shit, really, G, because I could have been locked up. Like, my life, man, I could be... What? What? <sighs> man, G. My life could be totally different from what it is right now. All over some dumb shit. And that's part of the reason why I still talk about it. Like, I gotta have this conversation. This has to be said. Because, I, gee, I guarantee you, right now, it's somebody somewhere, somebody's son, or somebody's brother, or somebody's father, that's going through this exact same shit, and if I could be to them who Tom like this was to me, then I feel like this video was worth it. This type of content was worth it. But yeah, I caught a blessing, man. I ain't get into no type of legal trouble over that shit. I was finally to the point where I was like, alright, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? I just want my shit back. Fuck it, I'm done. I could have just had the police escort me in the building. I could have got all my shit. We ain't got shit to say to each other. It could have been over with. But this motherfucker want to make shit difficult and bring me my stuff like piece by piece. Just to be in control of some shit and just to extend our interactions. You know what I'm saying? So that's something I moved back in with my family, right? She doing her. I'm doing me. Fortunately, we both was working. So only time we was in communication like that is if she was trying to bring me some of my shit. Or if we was going to this anger management class together so I can get back into the building. Whole time, I'm still in tune with Tom Likas. I started getting into uh, Paul Elam. That's when he was the happy misogynist, which I think he was better as the happy misogynist. That's another story for another day. But from Tom Likas, I got into A Voice for Men. From A Voice for Men, I got into Stardust and Barbarossa. And I just started soaking up all the information I could within the manosphere. Or taking a red pill, so to speak. During this anger management class, we did all of the routine... Um, conflict resolution practices like one person say how they feel the other person project or repeat back what they said to make sure that they understood it correctly all that good shit it was more like couples counseling than anything and i'm like i don't want a relationship i just want to get back in this building because she acted funny i just want to get all my shit and i'm gone the person running the class say can you look her in the face and tell her that that you don't want to be with her that y'all you don't see a future together i looked in the face i said i don't see us ever being together over time, I finally got all of my shit, and she was still trying to be cool. I wasn't trying to be cool. This is some other dumb shit I did in love, which was absolutely my fault. I put on two credit cards to help her build credit so she could buy her first car. And this motherfucker get mad at me and run up two stacks on both of the cards, I guess to try to teach me a lesson or some shit. 
So the whole time we ain't talking, she out partying. I'm talking about going in, kicking it, buying liquor, buying hotel rooms, shoes, flat screen TV. She ran up $2,000 in debt on a card that I put her on. And she knows I'm going to pay that shit off because I want to keep my credit good. So I cut that shit off. I had to bite the bullet and pay that shit. That was even more reason to not fuck with her ever again. So I just fell back that whole summer, G. I was salty at the crib. <laughs> at my mama crib, G. So when we stopped fucking with each other, it kind of caused this rift. And I guess it just made motherfuckers feel like they had to pick sides or something. But I didn't trust nobody. I'm like, fuck everybody. Except for family. All I did was work every day, watch MGTOW videos, and pay off debt. The whole summer. I paid off more debt in one fucking summer than I was able to pay off in a year and a half of a relationship with somebody else that's supposedly helping me. I did all that shit by myself. How the fuck that happened? <laughs> but I was blessed enough to make it happen. And by that fall, my debt was paid off. I got all my shit back. And I started doing my own thing. I started feeling myself again. And here she come talking about, you know, I think I want to move. I'm tired of Chicago. I'm like, what the fuck you telling me for? To add insult to injury, she asked me would I help her move. I'm like, no. <laughs> Not unless you finna give me that flat screen that I had to pay for. But, of course, she didn't want to do that. But me being a soft-ass nice guy that I am, after all of that bullshit, I agreed to kick it with her a few more times before she left. And we still managed to have fun. You know, we had a nice dinner downtown, Michael Jordan restaurant, kicking at a Navy Pill, partying on the boat and all that shit. And that was enough for me. I didn't want to end on a bad note with bitterness and us hating each other. But I didn't want to be friends either. I just wanted to, I wanted to end that chapter in our lives on a good note and just go our separate ways. Now, fast forward to October 30th, because she left on Halloween. So that was the last night that we spent together. And I'll never forget that night. It was cold. It was raining. And we laid in that apartment together. Nothing in that apartment but the furniture she left behind. We wasn't intimate or nothing like that. It was just an empty feeling. We was just holding each other like, damn, like, this is the last night. We woke up that morning, walked outside the complex together. I walked up to her car, made sure everything was packed right. And we stood there in the middle of the street crying. Just holding each other in the rain for a good five minutes. And when she got in her car and I got in my car, we went our separate ways. That was the last time we spent together. Yay! <laughs> no, a bullshit. Uh, that was the last time we spent together. And I promise you, the day that she left, I didn't have anything to say to her. I didn't want to communicate with her at all. So she would text me, she would uh, leave me voicemail, she would call me, she would have her son calling me, she would contact my mom, all type of shit to get in contact with me. I did not want to talk to this woman. And at this point, it ain't really had shit to do with her as much as it did me. Like, I'm embracing this new lifestyle. I'm getting money, I'm motherfucking MGTOW crazy and everything. So I'm not even trying to go backwards at this point. So I ain't been in communication with her damn near this whole time she moved. And on December 27, 2013, she drives back to Chicago for Christmas break. Shows up to my family house, banging on the door, threatens to damage my vehicle if I don't come outside and talk to her. Whole time I'm <laughs> sleeping in the motherfucker. Ain't nobody in the crib but me and my grandma. I wake up to this shit, and in any other situation, I would get up and run outside and, yo, oh, what you doing? Something came over me that just said, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck you, me. This was like the ultimate MGTOW test for me because I'm thinking to myself like anybody else would go out there and just beat up motherfucking ass, she, and fuck their life up and she would be still out here doing dicks and whatever, you know? It's cold outside. You want to bang on the door and you know I don't want to talk to you. I don't give a fuck. You want to blow up my phone? I don't give a fuck. You want to try to ruin my reputation because yours is ruined? I don't give a fuck. You want to damage my car? I don't give a fuck. Like, I just didn't give a fuck about shit. It was just like... I just don't care. I don't care. I do not care. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> That's such a powerful feeling. It's dangerous, but it's powerful. Like looking back, if you look at both of those videos back to back, the cheating video and a video of her scratching on my cot. One was Marcus before the red pill. The other was Marcus after the red pill. It's like two completely different motherfuckers, G. And I could feel the difference. It wasn't until I took the red pill until I started seeing things for what it is, like shaming tactics and emotional manipulation and all that shit. It's like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. 
Fuck everybody. Fuck everything. You know what I'm saying? And nobody can do shit to you when you feel that way. So I let her do whatever she thought she was finna do. I kept that evidence. I took that shit downtown and said, this bitch is crazy. I want an order of protection. I want to press charges for criminal damage of property. If nothing else, this was like a face-to-face -face introduction to gynocentrism for me. Because not only do motherfuckers clown you if you a dude making a fucking police report on a female... I had to go through all type of jokes, G. Fuck a police, like, why you ain't put it in the garage? Like, they would, would you ask a bitch that? If if I fucked her car, would you ask her that? Why you ain't just put it in the garage? I'm like, man, when you press these fucking charges, fuck you talking about? If it wasn't for the evidence, G, because I got footage, I got text messages, I got screenshots of her on Facebook bragging about the shit. If I ain't have all of that shit, G, nobody would have taken that seriously. The only reason this is a big deal to me because I heard about women just getting a slap on the wrist for the same crime that a man would get thrown the fuck under the jail for. But this was my opportunity to see just a just a tip of the iceberg, just to see an introduction to that shit face to face. And we went to court. This was a courtroom full of all females, female judge, everybody female except for the bailiff, of course. I had documentation from the insurance company showing that this was $1,100 worth of damages. Any damages over the amount of $300 is considered a felony. But what did they do? They gave her a slap on the wrist and made her pay $300 of restitution. Now, I'm not trying to ruin nobody's life either. I'm not trying to motherfucking get her sent to jail. I just want her to pay for what she damaged. And I swear to God, when I question the state's attorney on that, she gonna tell me some, you should be lucky that you got anything. And if you want to pursue her for the rest of the, the damages, then you need to take that to civil court. Can't nobody tell me, G, if I would have did that shit to her, I would have been locked the fuck up right now. It would have been different, G. It would not have been the same. So I just took the little $300. She just moved. This bitch broke anyway. Fuck it. Let her pay that and I'll be good. But that's the shit I won't let go, if anything. I ain't got no malice towards her because as far as I'm concerned, all of this same shit could have took place with a totally different motherfucker. My point is... Because of my experiences, in addition to the experiences of other men that I've witnessed and all of the stories that I've heard that's a whole lot worse than mine, my eyes have been open to this gynocentric society. To a society that really don't give a fuck about men beyond their utility value. And in the midst of all that, they manage to demonize us as if we're the oppressors. As if we're the ones that's not more likely to go to jail than is more likely to get ass raped with all this rape culture bullshit they talking about. As if we're not the ones to have our children taken away from us. As if we're not the ones to suffer greatly from divorce. As if we're not the ones more likely to be killed on the streets. As if we're not the ones most likely to go to war and fight and die for this country that don't give a fuck about us. So anyway, I knew this was going to be a long video and I didn't even say everything I wanted to say because I'm trying to preserve some of the details for this book that I'm working on. But that, amongst other things, is pretty much what brought me to where I am now. Like... If you would have told me two years ago that I would be doing what I'm doing now, <laughs> I wouldn't believe it. You know, I'm not stressed out. I'm not locked up. I'm not worried about no bitch. I'm not in no debt. I could go wherever the fuck I want to go, do whatever the fuck I want to do. I hooked up with the Baseline Group. Shout out to Patrice Coakley. We got the website cracking, www.themabexperience.com. It's like 2 in the morning. I'm sitting up here getting paid to get drunk and talk shit to y'all. you like, this is crazy. What more could you ask for? But anyway... That concludes my rant for now. I appreciate y'all listening. And once again, I want to give a special thanks and a shout out to Tom Likas for just doing what you're doing. You have saved my life. I don't think you understand how much of an impact you have had on not only my life, but just the lives of anyone that's a student of Likas 101. I've never called the show either. One day I'm going to call the show and just talk shit with him and I'm going to just tell him, G, like, you saved my fucking life. So special thanks to Tom Likas and special thanks to everybody that's listening. Please continue to like and share and subscribe and leave comments below. And uh, I'll holler at y'all. Peace and love.